Yeah, as Andrea said, uh, we will start uh, doing lightning talks at the beginning of, uh, of each session um, and we will talk about stuff, or you should talk about stuff um, that is not expert. And, um, and today we'll try to do something about the conditional operator or ternary operator in C++. Um, and, well, yeah, here you see the basic form, you see, well, we have con some condition, and in the, if the condition is true, then the left-hand side, or the left expression is evaluated, and otherwise the right expression is evaluated. Um, and first, we can say something about the condition. Condition is something that is either bool or that is convertible to bool. Uh, can be implicitly or explicitly convertible to bool. Um, anything is, is fine. Left and right is much more complicated. Left and right can be, um, there can be quite a lot of cases. Um, and we, can, we could talk about both types and also um, value categories. Value categories being L values, um, R values, and, and all those uh, different uh, things that we have there. I will leave out value categories. If somebody feels up to it, be my guest. Next, not next lighting talk, awesome. Um, I will leave that to somebody else. Um, so left and right can be, um, in the easiest case, could be, could be two values, like two ints, right? Um, but it can also be uh, a combination of, of a value and void. So um, there, are, there are several ways, again, then to do void. Uh, it could be void functions. In that case, you both left and right have to be uh, void functions, and then this would just mean that if the condition is true, we will call the left function, and otherwise we will call the right function. Right? Um, this, it's also possible that only one of them is void. Um, in that case, it has to be a throw uh, expression. Throw expressions are void, so then you could have, I don't know, an int on the left-hand side and a throw expression on the right-hand side. Um, that's also valid. In that case, um, the, the value of the, of the non-void is the, the, the type of the expression. Okay, Michael is having a great time. Have a you have a dumb question, okay. Can it also be a void function with marked no return? Sorry? Can it also be a void function with marked no return? Uh, can it be a void function that is marked no return? Um, That's why the question is dumb. So I have no idea. <laughs> um, yeah, cool thing about easy topics, right? <laughs> They're never easy, right? It's C++. Um, no, seriously, I, I have no idea, right? So, um, yeah, I think we, we talked about everything here. Um, if, um, if both left and right are actually values and non-void, um, then you can determine the, the type of the expression by local reasoning. Um, you don't have to look around how this is used or anything. Um, you can look at it as, as by local reasoning. Um, and the, the resulting or the, the type of the expression in total is um, determined by these two values in the sense that if they are both the same value type, then, well, let's say they are both int, then uh, the, resulting, the resulting type of the expression is int. If there are different types, then um, they have to be implicitly convertible into each other, or one has to be implicitly convertible into each other, in the, into the other. Um, so for instance, if you have um, an int and a float, then int um, is convertible to float. Now you can say also uh, float is convertible to int. Well, there is a special rule because C++ is always um, about special rules and everything. Um, float is also con convertible to int, but there are also um, precedences of what's what is preferred in terms of um, in terms of um, conversion. And uh, for int versus float, float wins. Okay, so if you have an int and a float, then um, we have a um, then we have a, f a float as the result. Um, it's also important to, to mention um, that left and right 
are equals here. Um, it doesn't matter whether you first have an int and then a float, or whether you first have a float and then an int. Um, the order is um, is um, of uh, has has no no importance for uh, for determining which type it is. Um, it's just if one one conversion wins, then then that's it. Yes, Lucas. Would it be the same as calling is a common type than all the types? So like in this case, the two types involved. Is it the same for calling column common type? Um, maybe I don't know. I have to look that up. OK, does can common type have no result if there is no common type? Because then, well, I mean, yeah. So Klaus mentioned that maybe common type is, impl is implemented in terms of uh, the conditional operator. I'm, I'm not too sure about that, because that might fail. Maybe that's a non-recoverable non error, but that's then not a beginner's topic anymore. <laughs> so, um, so let's see. Um, I, I think I've talked about most of the uh, things I wanted to show anyway. Okay, um, that's that. Okay, um, <coughs> the the example so far said well um, int and float and stuff like this. So built-in types, and then I, and then I said okay, there's there's something about precedence. Um, then let's. Let's try to use this um, and uh, also look into the um, implicit conversion operators that you might add to classes. Um, so here we start with, I don't know, some, some struct x, and then you have a function that takes a constant reference to x, right? And then you have some struct a, it has a, and then we'll say, okay, well, if true, any condition, um, then, well, we pass an a or another a uh, to this test function. Um, any guesses, does this compile? Who says it compiles? OK, a few hands. Who says it doesn't compile? OK, another few hands. Cool, that's good. OK, why doesn't it compile? X is not defined. Well, OK, that is awesome. Cool. Um, yeah, since S is, X is not defined, um, well, the, the operator um, is not defined. If you compile it, that's exactly what you get, right? There's no, no matching conversion operator because in the end, for this compilation, it doesn't really recognize this conversion operator, right? Okay, so um, if we define it, then everything is fine. Um, we have two types. A and A in this case um, in for left and right. Uh, the resulting type is A. A can be implicitly converted, converted to X. Okay, so we can call this function. Um, if there are two classes, um, A and B, right, and um, they are both convertible to X, and we call this um, operator now with um, A and B. Um, well, both are convertible to X, and we, we want to have an X in the uh, test. Now, who says this compiles? Okay, at least one. Who says it doesn't compile? Okay. Two say it doesn't compile, everybody else has no idea. <laughs> That's cool. Okay, so much for beginner's topic. Um, all right, so let's, let's give it a try. Okay, um, and what I said. Um, they have to be implicitly converted to each other, and it's about local reasoning, right? Lucas is dying. Um, okay, so it doesn't matter that we are expecting an X somewhere else, right? Uh, we're, um, the, the type of this expression has to be um, figured out by just looking at the expression itself. And since A and V are incompatible, um, the whole expression is invalid. Cool, and uh, I think the pretty much the the last thing. So let's say 
um, we add conversion operators now to A and B, so A can be converted into B, B can be converted into A, everything's fine, everybody, everybody can talk to each other. Um, okay, does this co now compile? Okay, you say it does compile? Okay, who says it doesn't compile? Okay, more hands, good. Um, okay, why not? Ambiguous, yes. So the compiler doesn't know which, uh, which target type to choose, right? Um, could choose both. Um, that's express, expressly, uh, exactly those, uh, what Clang says. Yes, Lucas. Yeah, yeah. So if you if you only have one of the conversion operators, um, or you make one of them explicit, like here, um, then it's fine, right? So, um, sorry. Yeah. Now, um, A is only explicitly convertible into B. B is implicitly convertible into A, um, and then everything is fine. The compiler is happy. Um, wonderful. Uh, sorry. Implicit wins. Implicit. Right. So that's the, the basic foundation. You have to have implicit convertibility. And then for the built-in types, there are these uh, special rules, um, which one is more preferable, um, and otherwise, um, well. Sorry? If both, if both were explicit, then it would again not compile, because the compiler wouldn't know what you want. Right. Again, um, if somebody wants to talk about value categories, uh, sorry, yeah, value, value categories like um, L values, R values, and all the uh, these things in this context, that's a nice lightning talk. Right. Cool. Thank you. <laughs>